Although she experienced artistic success during her lifetime, her work was often overlooked because she was the wife of a famous painter. As with many artists, it wasn't until after her death that her work became widely celebrated. Her artwork showcased a life full of illness, tragedy, pain, and sadness. This is the story of a woman who had a thirst for life. This is the story of Frida Kahlo, a strong spirit that lived in a broken body. Magdalena Carmen Frida Kahlo y Calderon was born on July 6, 1907 in the village of Coyoacan, located just on the outskirts of Mexico City. Her father, Wilhelm, was a German photographer who immigrated to Mexico where he met and married her mother, Matilda, who was of both American Indian and Spanish descent. Frida grew up with two older sisters and one younger sister in the family's home known as La Casa Azul, or the Blue House. In the early 1900s, polio epidemics were still rather common. When Frida was just six years old, she contracted the illness and became bedridden for nine months. As a result of the disease, her right leg became thinner and shorter than her left leg, and she developed a limp. When she returned to school, the other students bullied her for her disability, and Frida decided to cover her leg by wearing long skirts and pants. To help her recover, and even though it was considered inappropriate at the time for girls to participate in athletics, her father encouraged her to play sports. Young Frida played soccer, went swimming, and even wrestled. Frida had an especially close relationship with her father, and she would spend days on end helping him out in his photography studio. There she began to acquire an appreciation for the arts. She even took some drawing lessons, but she never really thought much more of it than a hobby. Frida was more interested in science and showed a great interest in becoming a doctor. At the age of 15, Frida entered La Escuela Nacional Preparatoria in Mexico City with an intent in eventually studying medicine. As one of only 35 girls out of 2,000 students that were enrolled at the time, Frida quickly became known for her boldness and candor. She joined the Cachuchas, a group of young people who shared similar political ideals and sentiments. While she attended the school, she met an artist by the name of Diego Rivera. Rivera had been commissioned to create a mural for the school's auditorium. Frida was fascinated by the artwork and she was captivated by the charismatic Rivera and she would spend much of her time admiring the work of art. In 1925, tragedy struck on a September afternoon. Frida and her boyfriend, Alejandro Gomez Arias, were traveling on a bus when it collided with a streetcar. Frida was impaled through her hip by a steel handrail. She also suffered fractures to her spine, pelvis, collarbone, leg, and ribs. In fact, her injuries were so extensive that her doctors did not expect her to survive. But Frida had a strong spirit, and after many weeks in the hospital and many surgeries, Frida was sent home to slowly recover. With nothing to do and a whole lot of time to kill, Frida began to teach herself to paint. Her father had a specially designed easel made for her so that she could paint while lying in bed. Frida spent much of her time alone, so she usually used herself as a subject of her work. By late 1927, Frida's convalescence had ended and she began to reconnect with her old school friends, who were now attending university. Many of her friends had become involved in student politics. This motivated Frida to join the Mexican Communist Party. Frida was reintroduced to Diego Rivera in 1928 and she asked him to evaluate her work. Frida was exhilarated by Rivera's encouragement and she continued to paint. Even though Diego was 20 years older than Frida and he had been unfaithful in his previous marriages, the two soon became romantically involved. They married in 1929 despite the protestations from her parents. 
After marrying Diego, Frida's painting style began to change. She began to take great interest in Mexican folk art and her mother's Tijuana culture. She also changed her personal clothing style and started to wear the traditional Tijuana dress that entailed loose-fitting blouses, long ruffled skirts, bold gold jewelry, and a flowered headdress. In the early years of their marriage, Frida and Diego traveled to the United States for Diego's work. They lived in San Francisco, as well as New York City. The couple eventually moved to Detroit, Michigan, where Diego was commissioned to work for the Detroit Institute of Arts. During their travels throughout the United States, Frida endured several difficult pregnancies, all of them ending in miscarriages. In 1933, Diego was commissioned to paint a fresco for Rockefeller Center. The mural that Diego created, entitled Man at the Crossroads, included the image of Vladimir Lenin, who was a known communist leader. Nelson Rockefeller insisted that the image be removed, but Rivera refused to cover it up. The work was stopped and that part of the mural had been plastered over. After the controversy at Rockefeller Center, Frida and Diego returned to Mexico where they took up residence in a new home that consisted of separate and individual living and studio spaces. For Frida to visit Diego, she would have to scale exterior steps and cross a bridge to his studio space. This residence became a gathering place for many artists and political activists. Frida's marriage to Diego was considered to be unconventional, and by the mid-1930s, Diego's many extramarital affairs, as well as Frida's infidelities, had begun to weaken their marriage. Frida then suffered heartbreak again in 1934, when she experienced another miscarriage. But it was the affair between Diego and Frida's younger sister, Christina, that hurt Frida more than any of his other betrayals. The couple divorced in 1939. That same year, Frida created one of her most notable paintings, The Two Fridas. The following year, Frida and Diego reconciled and remarried. They moved into Frida's childhood home. In 1941, Frida lost her beloved father, and she continued to suffer from chronic health problems. Frida became deeply depressed, but despite the physical challenge that she was facing, her work continued to grow in popularity. A few years later, she was selected to be a professor of painting at La Esmeralda, the Education Ministry's School of Fine Arts. But Frida's health continued to decline further, and she frequently turned to drugs and alcohol for pain relief. Even so, Frida continued to paint many self-portraits featuring her expressionless and resolute gaze. During the late 1940s and early 1950s, Frida underwent numerous surgeries on her spine that frequently required lengthy hospital stays. She continued to suffer in pain as she often had to wear supportive corsets to help her spine. Frida was now constantly housebound and found simple pleasures in surrounding herself with animals and tending to her home garden. Eventually, Frida's right foot turned gangrenous and she once again became bedridden. In 1953, she had her first solo exhibition and though she was in poor health, Frida arrived to the exhibition's opening by ambulance and welcomed all who attended. She celebrated the ceremony from her bed that the gallery had set up for her. A few months later, part of her right leg required amputation in order to stop the gangrene from spreading. Still, she continued to paint, but her work had changed and had become blatantly political. Early in 1954, she contracted pneumonia that never really went away. Frida Kahlo died on July 13, 1954. She was 47 years old. The official cause of death was ruled as a pulmonary embolism set on by pneumonia, but some have speculated that she may have accidentally overdosed on painkillers. Frida Kahlo's fame has only continued to grow since her death. 
Her works have been widely celebrated for being so deeply personal. Her life has been applauded for her individuality and her uncompromising sense of self. Her intense pride for her Mexican roots have also made her a source of pride for many in her culture. Frida Kahlo's home has been transformed into a museum and pays homage to her life of art and creative expression. Her body was cremated and her ashes are still on display today. I want to say thank you to all of the creators of Frida's art. I will list their gallery IDs in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. If you would like to hear more stories of how they died, please help my channel continue to grow by giving this video a thumbs up, clicking that subscribe button, and sharing this video with your friends. Be sure to turn on the notifications so that you never miss a new story, and I will talk to you next time. Bye guys.